On October 2nd, 2006, Marie Monville got a phone call. Her husband Charlie was on the other line and he said he wasn't coming home. Marie didn't know what was going on and she was blindsided by what happened next. Marie Monville married Charlie, her high school sweetheart. Life as she knew it was normal. But after three kids and almost 10 years of marriage, everything she knew about her life would change. On October 2nd, 2006, Charlie walked into an Amish schoolhouse in their hometown and shot 10 girls, killing five of them. The event shocked the nation. Joining us now for the rest of the story is Marie Monville. Marie, thanks for joining us on the 700 Club. Thank you so much for having me. This, when something dreadful like this happens, I always think of the family of the person who, for whatever reason, mental illness, just having a, a, an incredible anger, the family is left to contend with all of this. This had to be an incredible shock for you. Will you walk us through what happened to you that day? Sure, you know, Charlie called and said that he wasn't coming home, and as I tried to listen to him, I was so stuck on that first sentence to know that, you know, my world was shattering around me, uh, and that everything I thought to be true about our life together was suddenly over. But in that very moment, I felt the presence of the Lord in such a tangible way that really gave me strength to carry on. So when he called, did you, did you recognize in the tone of his voice or in what he said that there was something really serious happening? You know, he said he wasn't coming home and I could tell by the sound of his voice that he meant that I would never see him again. You know, and I couldn't have imagined what was going to unfold and he didn't allude to it, but um, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, amazing how life can change in an instant. You just can't be prepared for that. He did tell you that he'd left a note. What did mm -hmm. his note say? You know, his note talked a lot about the loss of our first daughter mm -hmm. um, and the anger that he felt towards the Lord over that loss and, and that being his motivation for what he was going to do that day. But still, I didn't know what was coming. Did you, did you know that he harbored this anger toward God and that this depression from, you had a daughter that mm -hmm. was, that died in vitro or? She was born premature at 26 weeks oh. of pregnancy. And there would be times that I could see him suffering from mild depression off and on throughout the years, but it wasn't anything that interfered with his ability to go to work or to engage in our family. Mm. You know, and as I talked to him about it, encouraged him to talk with someone, he thought that he could handle it on his own, but it wasn't something that really pointed to this type of circumstance. So when did you first learn what had happened? You know, I heard the sirens going overhead and the, from the police the and the helicopters and, and things. Um, and I knew, you know, my stomach felt sick and I was sure that it must all be combined. It couldn't be just a coincidence. And as the police pulled in my driveway, oh, I, knew, I knew that it was about Charlie. What went through your heart and mind when they told you what had happened? You know, it was just un incomprehensible to me that the man that I had been married to for almost 10 years was the one that did that. Um, you know, everything about who he was was completely different than the man that walked into that schoolhouse. Mm -hmm. um, but I felt the Lord and I felt him coming in strength and compassion and wrapping his arms around me in a way that was deeper than anything I had ever known before. And it really carried me through. How did you protect your children during this time? Because this is an awful thing for your family to endure as well as those who lost their children. You know, and that was really just um, sought out through the Lord and as counselors led us that day, knowing that my kids needed to know the truth before they went back to school, but that it was very, I had to be intentional about the way that I shared the details with them. Yeah. Even within hours after this shooting took place, the Amish community mm -hmm. did something really unbelievable. Absolutely. I was in my parents' home and looking out their kitchen window, I saw some Amish men coming down the street and I knew they were coming to my parents' house. And what I said, did you think that? Well, I, I couldn't figure out what to do. And I went to my mom and dad and said, what Gosh. do I do? My dad said that he would go out and talk with them. Um, and so I saw the exchange on the driveway. I couldn't hear them, but I saw them put their hand on his shoulder and wrap their arms around him. And, and as he came inside, he told us that they had forgiven Charlie and they were extending grace and compassion over our family. Wow. Mm -hmm. I know that you struggled with questions anybody would have sure. after this. Should I have seen something sooner? Was there something I could have done? How, right. did, how did you work through all of that, Marie? 
You know, just by laying that at the Lord's feet, knowing that there really wasn't anything that I could have done differently, um, there weren't any signs. You know, I talked about that a lot with counselors and with our family and friends. Um, but just bringing it back to the Lord continually and being willing to lay mm -hmm. it there, knowing that He wanted to take it from me over and over again. You say that you found hope in this tragedy. Mm -hmm. In what way? You know, in so many ways, just as God has brought redemption over our family, that it doesn't matter how dark the day is or how deep the valley is, it's not the end of our lives and it's not the end of the story that God is writing for us and that there's beauty and hope beyond these desperate moments. Um, you know, and I've seen God unveil that in my life, um, both through my marriage to my husband Dan now and also over our family. Yeah. Did you have moments, though, right after this happened where you wondered how in the world you would go on? Absolutely. You know, I couldn't figure out how life was going to change and what it was going to look like, um, except to trust that God is everything he's, He says He is. Yeah and that his promises are without fail and that he was going to come through and carry us. But I couldn't understand how that was going to look. And there were a lot of times that, you know, just wrestling with emotions and wanting to stay fixed on him. Did you ever feel angry <laughs> at your husband about what had happened? I mean, you were the one sort of left to deal right. with it. You know, I felt a lot of emotions, but I knew that anger was what drove Charlie that day inside the schoolhouse. And I didn't want anger to reside in me. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, just processing through those emotions and allowing the Lord to bring healing was what really set me free. You've remarried now and your, your life has moved on into a, a wonderful new place, but you say this, when we face tragedy, something is released inside of us that's beautiful that wouldn't be released otherwise. What do you mean by that? I think it's finding out who you really are and finding the treasures that are buried down inside of yourself that you wouldn't have thought to look for otherwise or thought were capable of being there. You know, I've discovered so much about myself that I wouldn't have ever known mm -hmm. apart from this journey with the Lord. And maybe finding out more about who God really is. Absolutely, <laughs> that too. Yes. As well. yes. You've written a book called One Light Still Shines. What do you want people to take away from this when they read it? You know, I think pain is universal. We all have places of pain in our lives. And and for the people that read the book, I want them to know that it doesn't matter how much pain you're going through. There is beauty and there's life on the other side. God will never leave you. Yeah. He's always with you. Never give up. Well, we thank you for telling your story thank today, you so for much. sharing it with us. And I want you to know if you'd like to hear more, you can get Marie's book. It's called One Light Still Shines. It's available in stores nationwide. It's great to have you with us thank today. Thank you so much.